uh, yeah, I'm just going to focus mainly, I have worked on a number of sort of uh, digital narrative projects and still do, uh, but it, uh, this was the one I was asked to talk about and I think it's very relevant to what we've already heard and been discussing. Um, it's called In Search of Alton. It was, um, I wrote it while being the digital writer in residence. Uh, at the Trace Online Writing Centre about uh, four or five years ago. <coughs> Being a digital writer in residence is, um, is great because you don't actually have to be in residence. <laughs> you just have to be online. So while it was based at Nottingham Trent University, I, I was only there um, a few days a month and the rest of the time I just had to hang out in various virtual spaces and talk to other writers and people who might be interested in writing. Um, but also talk, interestingly enough, to people who were designers, photographers, came from all kinds of creative backgrounds, but were interested in narrative or uh, telling stories or collaborating in online spaces. Uh, so this, half my time was, I had to sort of walk it, walk it like I talked it, which was to actually write something. And this was what I ended up writing. Um, and it started very, the very, I think, I'll just run you through what it is and how it evolved over time, because I think that has some relevance to some of the issues we've been talking about. Um, I started this actually not as a website. Um, I started this just as a statement in, a, in an online forum, uh, which I then reposted to a blog, uh, which was this, which was, um, I just showed this picture, a tiny little picture, uh, and said, attached is the only picture of Alton, my childhood town, that I have found so far. It's the only evidence I have that Alton ever existed that my childhood existed, that my family ever existed as a family. And you can tell me about this photo will be of use. Consider the green, the trees, the street furniture, the architecture, the cars. Um, it is actually that the only picture of, uh, I could find of the place where I grew up. It's not far from here. It's uh, 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 Hingham, south of Norwich. And um, uh, when I go back there, there's not, it's not very recognisable to me. Uh, and um, because my parents were of a pretty digital age, they didn't have... Um, they have these sort of black and white photo albums that sit in an attic somewhere out in near Fakenham uh, and I don't have access to them by the internet in order to show my children about my childhood. So I find that very frustrating. So um, this story was a little bit about the disconnection between my children and my parents in terms of the way that they could tell their stories through media. Um, now I thought it would be interesting at this point to tell a story about my background based on f other people's material. <laughs> rather than my own. Uh, so I started with this picture, uh, and very quickly, nice it, uh, someone called Mazzy replied, uh, and uh, told me about the fact that she'd lived in Alton, um, and with her grandparents, and had a house there, and liked to walk her imaginary dogs there. <laughs> now, um, uh, I happen to know at this point that Alton didn't exist. Uh, I'd made up that word, Alderton. I knew that uh, if you Googled it, you wouldn't find it. Uh, and I knew that if you looked for Alton.com, you'd find me, because I'd bought it. Um, so I'd already set a hair running that if people went looking for it, it wasn't going to be there. There are places called Alton, O-U-L-T-O-N, down in south of the border in Suffolk. And um, uh, there are some other ones like Alton Towers, obviously A-L-T-O-N, but there is no Alton. Um, uh, now, there was just me and Mazzy talking at this point, <laughs> but I realised there were other people watching, so I sent her an imaginary dog. <laughs> uh, so that seemed to me rule number one, that if somebody chooses to collaborate with you or participate with you, um, then you need to reply and possibly say thank you and maybe give them a present or a hug or something. So they thank God you're here. <laughs> um, the next person was the Googler, who, um, who went Googling for anything Mark Tolton and found this shield. So I knew that was already there, but great that somebody bothered to do it and then send it to me. Here is the shield of Lambert Volton. Perhaps you are related to him. His shield has a sheep on it, so a connection with farming. Uh, and this is a guy called Paul, who runs haikus. Uh, and um, uh, so now I had a picture, uh, a dog and a shield. Uh, we had some beech tree beach tree footage and then someone found Alton Suffolk and sent me a, and said are you aware of any Suffolk connections 
Maybe you feel a twang when by the sea, many Alton men were sailors, sailing out. Perhaps some of the rights of Alton were not armors, but sailors. They would sit on the bench on that little green in your picture and tell tales of the sea. Later sing songs, sea shanties in the pub. Do you know any sea shanties, Tim? Anyone else? <laughs> okay, so now we're into a sing fest. This is so uh, things, have, things have changed. Actually, this was very good because this then um, made me realise that I was writing this story a little bit about as to commemorate my dad, who died. And um, so I said, I think you may have me on something here. Many years after his death, my dad's ashes were scattered at sea off the coast near Lowestoft. True. The only thing I know about my dad's death was that he was found in his car on a beach near Alton, which is why we moved away so suddenly. Uh, I don't have any memory of him leaving or saying goodbye. I'm hoping I can perhaps conjure up his farewell as part of this project. In fact, that may well be what this project is all about. Isn't it great to start a story not knowing what it's all about? <laughs> <laughs> and then being able to admit it. So that's a really liberating thing about the web. You can just start noodling around and uh, scratching an itch. Uh, and not really knowing what it's about yet. And then somebody else throws it into focus. And then I couldn't resist the joke, which, well, it's a rather weird joke, which was that uh, my dad was an alcoholic and depressive and was also a keen sailor in his youth. The only sea shanty I know for, therefore, is what shall we do with a drunken sailor? <laughs> uh, there was that, that actually then got quite a number of people to respond in the forum about how I shouldn't be taking the death of my father so lightly and making rather <laughs> sick jokes. But it, it, in fact, you know, it, it worried another three or four people out of the bushes, which was quite, <laughs> quite, quite, quite uh, handy. Um, um, now, this, um, so it's starting to build from one person to two people to six people. Uh, around this time, um, I was lucky enough to get the funding as part of this program to go around the UK and do creative workshops <coughs> with people who wanted to know about writing online. And then we used this project as a way for people to sort of get into it of just post one note or one picture, it doesn't matter what it is, we're just going to stick it all together and see what we've got. And um, I also left uh, actual post Alton postcards that I'd made up around the towns I visited to, so that people could send, send stuff. If they weren't into the internet, they could at least post me. So um, uh, I started getting at home through the post uh, some really nice uh, handwritten objects <laughs> from people uh, this message was someone else who's also called Tim. I've recently discovered that you were never real. This has come as a bit of a shock. <laughs> Ten years is a long time to hang your hopes on an imaginary person. I met a lady last year who told me to write your name on a piece of paper, attach it to a balloon and then let go. Instead, I made you a room, played you songs, got drunk and imagined you walk in and gave me your jumper to wear. Obviously, my family thought it was quite odd that I'd received this postcard through the post at home. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, and uh, seemed to be getting me into a very different kind of relationship with people who enjoyed writing. Um, so I'm building up now a collection here of uh, people who could email me. Uh, I've got a signal box, uh, old tonic records, uh, the cricket pitch, uh, the beach. Oh, it's a seaside town now. I didn't realise that. Uh, it had a farmhouse. Uh, it had characters like Stop and Go Joe. Do you remember Stop and Go Joe? Uh, and, uh, and then people who didn't uh, want to deal in text could um, uh, send photographs. Some people did both. So, uh, and some people just... So I've got pub signs and stuff from churches. 